Hello, everybody, and um, welcome to our commentary of uh, No... S now, now You See Me, sorry. What is Now You See Me? Basically, it's a movie about magic, and by that I mean it's not like uh, The Illusionist or The Prestige, where it's a character-driven piece, where magic is more like a background plot device. No, no, no. This movie actually is really about magic and even goes out of its way to explore the technicalities of how certain magic tricks work. Yes. Apparently, this is actually a movie that actually brings up a creative concept. Exploring the uses of magic, but also using it to track down, well, a criminal. Which actually does speak for an interesting plot. I mean, yeah, certain TV shows have done it, but for a whole movie to try and do it, it does scream potential. And heck, it's got a great cast, too. We've got the likes of Michael Caine, Morgan Freeman, Isla Fisher, Woody Harrelson, and, of course, now legendary Mark Ruffalo. And Jesse Eisenberg. Oh, yeah, that's <sighs> right. One of the main characters. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, Jesse Eisenberg is... He's okay, but yeah, as Pedro was stated, he's best known for his roles as dick characters. And the movie was... And this movie is no different, because trust me, in here he's playing the same character he's always playing. <laughs> and it's, this, this film was directed by Louis Leterrier, who in the past has done the first two Transporter movies, the a film called Unleashed, which I know nothing about, the 2008 Incredible Hulk film, and the remake of Clash of the Titans. Mad to the max. So clearly, we're dealing with um, a genius. I'm guessing he was of hoping course. for this to be. I'm guessing he was it's... hoping for this to be his big breakout film. I mean, heck, All with right, a cast like this. Start... Okay. Before yeah. we start the commentary, let's get this out of the way. Yes, this movie is produced by uh, Roberto Orkin and Alex Kurtzman. They're not writing. They're not directing. Just let it go, people. Seriously, seriously, right? Seriously, every time their names are even mentioned, people run for the hills and scream. <laughs> Although ah! nowadays, Twibs, you'd be surprised, because like, well, now it's got even more bloodier. See, lately, since uh, Alex or basically since Orkin and Kurtzman have had some success, now whenever people are out to get them, there are then an army out there to defend them. Which so leads wait a minute, to all the wait a minute, bloodshed. wait a minute, Dwebs, how come nobody screams for the hills whenever Aaron Sorkin or Neil Blomkamp are mentioned? Because I do. Because Neil Cause... Blomkamp is actually well regarded still. And because he's making Alien 5, so he gets, shall we say, diplomatic immunity unless that movie turns out to be a Oh, speaker. and David Fincher. Let's not forget David Fincher. True, uh... he's not a writer, but yeah. Oh, David because... Fincher gets plenty of flack these days. Not really. Gone Girl was apparently acclaimed as a fucking... Anyway, we're getting off track. Okay, yeah. basically, audience, we'll be watching the extended edition of this movie. If I remember, I, I, I'm, I don't own the movie, but I'm guessing it comes with a Blu-ray, probably. If there uh, are multiple versions, basically it's the extended version that's 2 hours, 4 minutes, and 48 seconds. As opposed to the regular theatrical cut, which is only 1 hour and 55 minutes. Uh, so yeah, basically, audience, you should start in the video. <laughs> Right before the Summit Entertainment logo pops up, you should be seeing a black screen and you'll be in sync with us. Uh, so yeah, let's start. Three, two, one, click. Oh, another thing about this movie is the actual writers that they got. The writers have worked on films such as the first, the, the Bill and Ted films, Men in Black, uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie, Charlie's Angels, um, The Punisher from 1989, From Dusk Till Dawn 2, and Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. Interesting, to an extent. Okay, and and okay, basically this this KO paper KO. products. That's Kurtzman and Orsi's um, production company. There he is. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, okay. Listen to him. Listen to him. All right. He's For less than a minute delivery, in and already he's his, his delivery of the lines. His delivery of the lines is literally the exact same delivery from the social network movie. This is this is the Mark Zuckerberg character, just with a different name. So Mark Zuckerberg was secretly a magician. It's the, same, it's the, same, it's the same thing with Batman versus Superman. The very moment I first saw Jesse Eisenberg in, yep, the, in, in, the, the, in the trailers. Mm -hmm. the very the very of, uh, yeah, go on. Jesse Eisenberg, judging from the trailer, Jesse Eisenberg is pretty much playing once again Mark Zuckerberg, except for a wig. Mm, with Batman vs. Superman, I can see similarities, but nowhere similar as, say, this movie where I'm equal. I mean, literally less than a minute, and even I have to say he sounds a lot like Mark Zuckerberg from Social Network. Network. <laughs> I've seen that movie, I think, but I barely remember it. 
That's because that movie is a gigantic pile of flumpy dick. Ooh, but, shots fired! <laughs> but yeah, it's like, well, with Jesse Eisenberg, he's a special case. It's like, well, he definitely has the capabilities to be outside the dick character. The issue is like, well, even in the good movies he stars in where he's not a dick, like, they don't get as recognized as much. So I can understand why you definitely well, see I'll be this. seeing... Well, my brother is going to fo- for- take me to see... Man, Man vs. Superman Day 1. I didn't really want to, but uh, my brother insisted and he's going to pay for it, so uh, I guess I'll be able to watch it. So in this well. guy now is Merritt oh. McKinney, who is played by Woody Harrelson. Yeah. Oh, so that's his character's name. I, I just call them by their actor names because their characters are so unmemorable. Yeah. I'm just looking it up on Wikipedia. Yeah. Yeah. And to be fair, I mean, I guess with Man of Steel versus Batman, that should, I guess that can be one of the movies that you give him a pass for being a dick because, hey, he's playing Lex Luthor. Yeah, Although, the problem is that, uh, the, yeah, problem is that the, the, the problem is that, the problem is that, no, that's, uh, the, the Lex Luthor we see in those trailers is not the Lex Luthor, uh, it's not how Lex, Lex Luthor should, have, but again, we're, we're getting off track, let's get back to this. Woody Harrelson, a fine actor. Very, very good. Mm-hmm. In fact, yeah, this movie has a lot of good cast members. I mean, heck. L- l- like cinema, like the like the the cinema sins parody uh, said, this is one of those movies that tries its hard to make you to make to fool people into believing that they're watching a Christopher Nolan movie, even though they're actually watching a movie from the same guy who gave us Clash of Titans. Heck, heck, heck. Hang just watching a Christopher Nolan movie. When I see the words Michael Caine and Morgan Freeman, I expect an awesome movie, even if I personally don't like that movie. I mean, Morgan Freeman and Michael Caine are some of the big acting giants still to this day. And trust me, they do not often come for the cheap stuff. Except for apparently that British film that Morgan Freeman was in. What was it called, Dweebs? So, what was it? Sorry, what was that, Jova? I said, I mean, except for that British film Morgan Freeman was in that apparently grossed, uh, how little, you say? I'll check. Yeah. And Mark Spot- Ruffalo is an FBI agent. To be fair, I guess this was before Mark Ruffalo really got well known, but even still, he's a pretty good actor. Oh, great. Coming up is Dave Franco. So, what about him do you find that bad? It, it just comes It just comes off to me as like, you know, when he tries to act, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just kind of sounds a bit forced. I'll admit, one of the movies I saw him in, I kind of mistook him for James. <laughs> okay, Jova, that movie's called Momentum. You mean the one I'm... Oh, right, 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 Momentum. It's a movie that costs $20 million to make. And, and um, how much? Uh, in terms in, of the UK box office? Yes. Just let me get it up. Um, it, took a, it took £46 pounds on its opening weekend. Let's see. 40... Not 46000 not £46 million, £46. Pounds. Let's see, convert that to dollars, and that is $65.11. So it costs about as much as a PS4 game. Hmm. A Wii U game, too. Wow. All right. Anyway, uh, now we're getting introduced to our female empty. Yes. Basically, she's a sort of, kind of, but not really love interest for Jesse Eisenberg's character. Uh, a lady has to have handcuffs. Ha ha ha! Funny. So she's an escape artist, one of those special kinds of magicians. Yeah, that that was one of the big tricks. Um, we also uh, the, in Prestige Two. Neat. So let's see how well this goes. Wild webs, uh, that's the thing. Uh, in movies, this trick always goes horribly wrong. Oh boy. Really? I mean, so let me get this straight. Uh, so, is this some conspiracy or is this literally just her? No, act no, no, no. Uh, right now, we're just getting introduced to the characters. Don't worry, no, nothing goes wrong. Mm. Like, they try to pretend it's something like right now, but in reality, she survives, so don't worry about that. 
Oh, I get that. I, well, what I mean is, like, well, I mean, is this just a trick going wrong? You'll see. Hold on. All right. Oh. Oh, Primus. And she gets eaten. I mean. Why would you have a, a cage of piranhas there? I guess, I guess it's part of the escape act. Oh, well, she's dead. Uh, oh, wait, wait. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I'll give him to that. That was actually Yay, a pretty good she trick. she was nearly murdered. Well, I get the feeling that that was part of the illusion. Look at this. This scene feels like it was stricken straight out of Social Network. (laughs) If Aaron Sorkin wrote a movie about magicians. Yeah. No, I I don't think about this scene specifically. Yeah. Now, to be fair about the escape artist scene, Dwibs, that was actually part of the act. See, some magicians do this whole fake their death thing, and then, poof, they're over there. Yeah, but, uh, Jova, there's only so many times they can do that. It's like the boy who cried wolf. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. I guess uh, I guess I sort of have a leniency with it because well that's part of the act and magicians do that sort of stuff. Granted, oh. I will admit it is very extreme. I mean, you don't see a lot of magicians use blood. So Eisenberg's boning a lady and notices an invitation. <laughs> Ah, and the characters point it out. So he brought a woman in and she took off her clothes and they were about to do it. Just to show he's a player, I guess. Oh, who am I kidding? We're never even going to hear from that girl again, are we? (gasps) Guys, tarot cards. (laughs) Hermit. Ha 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 ha. So. Alright. The piranhas are still there? Well, yes. yeah. And there's Miss Not Dead. Yeah. Basically, all four of them are finding this weird card uh, that invites them to some place, basically. And it's in the middle of... Wow, uh, wow. We're, we're, all, we're, only, we're not even 10 minutes into the movie yet, and Lewis is already bored. That's a record. Brian Tyler's music isn't helping. D- that, this is a record, probably. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I have to think even, even if, I think even after last season, he did more time to board Dwibs. <laughs> Actually, from what I hear, Dwibs wasn't so much bored with after last season as much as he was practically driven mad by it. Then again, all you guys were driven mad by that movie from what I heard in the recording. It was like listening to an audio log in Bioshock, hearing the victim slowly go all the more insane. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Uh, guess what, Twips? Since there used to be a couple, obviously their dialogue is going to be mostly bickering. Oh, oh they're boy. exes. But why are they together then? It's got to be one of those, hey, the exes are getting back together, even okay, though they told me okay. said they won't. Thing. Okay, uh, Louis, what's with all these constant cuts and angle changes? Well, Dwebs, uh, have you seen any of his movies? Incredible Hulk. Then you should know at this point that he's not very good at this. Yeah, he's, he's playing fucking... Um, he's playing fucking... Um, Oh, Zuckerberg. Fox Zuckerberg again. It, it, that's why. That's my big problem with uh, Jesse Eisenberg. In every movie I see him, he's always playing the exact same character. Yeah. Is, is he like this in American Ultra? No, no. Uh, thankfully not. It's what, like you I said. That movie, Joker? Yeah. It's like I said, Dwibs. It's like, well, the main weakness with Jesse Eisenberg is like, well. Even in the films that he gives his best that he's actually good in, those never get to be as well known as the real big ones he's in, Rio notwithstanding. But... Oh, uh, oh, Jova. Yeah? Jova, did, did, did you like American Ultra? Mm, I don't know what to feel about that movie. Well, in that case, then, Jova, according to the writer of that movie, you're a prick who doesn't like original movies. There oh, you go. oh, Oh, that American Ultra! 
Yeah. <laughs> oh. Then you don't like original movies and you're a prick, apparently, Jova. Uh, come, guys, come on. Let's uh, try to keep focus here. Yeah, we'll have plenty of time to make those jokes when we get to American Ultra, but for now... I'll just leave it and say I'm mixed on that movie. Right. So yeah, basically they all they they all kind of knew each other before, and they were in, all invited here. Basically, all right, they're and invited. They're invited to some to some random apartment in New York. You know, okay, basically, know, basically where, 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 whatever city they're in, I don't know. You see, it's basically one of the things is that the writers of those also wonderful movies that you've listed are now trying to do a cerebral uh, film. Right. The problem is that the problem is that. Yeah. Uh, you can tell that it's they're not really good at it because uh, this movie uh, is trying to have a complex plot. The problem is that there's little to no attention to detail. It's because of that, there's so many plot holes at every turn. That especially the twist, because the twist makes no, the, the, the twist is so now you stupid. Don't. Now you see me. Now you don't get it. I'm get it. I'm surprised you didn't call the sequel that. Now you don't. Yeah, that would actually be a much a clever title. Actually, yeah. From the sequel to Now You See Me, Now You Don't. You now know, you know I'm guessing may... because the studio forced them to do that because, you know, brand name and shit. You oh. know, this may be a bit of a stupid question in hindsight, but I have to openly wonder, if you're going to have Michael Caine and Morgan Freeman, why not push to have them as the main characters? I mean, I mean, seriously, I mean... I mean, okay, you're it's not always going to have them at the forefront. You see, but... Joe, it's like in Transcendence, where uh, we need some legitimacy. Bring Morgan Freeman in here. I get that, I get that. But if you're going to bring Morgan Freeman and Michael Caine, at least make one of them one of the four main magicians. I mean, you know, wouldn't that make a bit more sense? Unless it's a movie specifically geared for having guest star appearances <sighs> like that. I don't know. Uh, um, I'm sorry. Is this magic or is this just Rube Goldberg stuff? <laughs> oh, Java, just wait. And now holograms. I thought this was a movie about magic. Well, magic does use illusionism, so maybe well, this is all Iron a big holograms. magic trick, just meant to look technological. What is magic? They're using CG. Wow. And there we go. Now you see me. Oh, so now we get the title. And none of us even know what the heck this movie is supposed to be about yet. I'm talking Las the Vegas, one year one later. One year later. So, so yeah, the now, one year la- so yeah, one year after that, now they're a group of four magicians who perform live shows. What? Did what? they like, discover the Ark of the Cosmos in there and that gave them superpowers? You'll see, Jova. Um, remember, this is supposed to be a mystery, so we're supposed to unravel the mystery as we go along. Wait, I thought the mystery had to wait, do with a crime. Wait, what, it also wait. has to do with what they found, too. Wait. Uh, uh, well, Jova, again, if I tell you everything, this will right. spoil the fun. Wait, the four horsemen? Michael, there's yes. no Michael Fassbender here. Eh? Wait, is it, it's interesting because... Um, uh, it's interesting. I'm referencing X-Men Apocalypse, Jova. Ah. I love how in this all they do in this show is just walk around with no clear direction. Oh! See, look at them. Look at them in the background. All they're doing is walking around and shit. So where uh, are we? Discount Las Vegas. Discount no, New no, York. No, 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 is this Las Vegas? Ah, goody, Las Vegas then. So they're going to do a magic trick in front of all these audience. What will they do? Ah. I wonder. Okay, and now, ladies and gentlemen, we need some legitimacy, so let's bring in Morgan Freeman. Please tell me he's at least going to appear frequently enough throughout the film. Jova, Jova, Jova. Let's not forget. What's the main use filmmakers use for Uh, Morgan? Oh, is he going to be the narrator? Guys, he gave him... Not just that. Guys, he gave him the... The phone, but he still has the phone. Get it? Because magic. Anyway, so Morgan Freeman uh, is a magician. Okay. Re- re- remember, remember uh, Jova. What have we learned about Morgan Freeman uh, according to South Park? Exposition. 
Yeah, basically, uh, basically, one of the jokes is that every time Morgan Freeman comes and explains something convoluted, he gains a freckle. So, yeah, basically, uh, that's basically Morgan Freeman's role in this movie. Every time something convoluted needs explaining, he shows up and explains it. So, it's one of those used Morgan Freeman bare bones style movies. Yes. Oh, Pedro, I just realized something. Yes. You know, a criticism of all Zian Kurtzman's movies is that stuff seems to happen like magic. Yeah. yeah. Well, they decided to produce this movie about magic. <laughs> oh, let, 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 pay attention here. Yes. Tell them the name of your bank in front of millions of people. I'm, look, I know they may not be the bad guys, but don't you think maybe that... Well, could be fair, Joma, just saying the name of the bank, that doesn't allow them to steal anything. Uh, 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 remember, Pedro, in this technological future that we have, a magical science can make it that so much as knowing the name of the bank will allow you to hack its data accounts and then play a video game that allows you to hack through it. I'm running off of movie logic. Oh, there you go, the benefactor. This is the guy who finances the, these uh, shows. And there is... Kane. So, uh... In regards to, say, actual involvement with the plot, how are Morgan Freeman and Michael Caine? Um, Michael Caine is basically here to be... He's be uh, I can't quite explain his role yet because of spoilers, enough, but uh, Mor like, uh, Morgan Freeman is exposition dump. Yeah, I was maybe just asking you, like, appearance-wise, it's like, I make like, you know, um, as, you know, go... They're going to be in it quite a bit. Okay, that's good. Because if there's one thing I wouldn't be able to forgive, it's wasting Morgan Freeman... Yes, let's Cain. yeah, yes, let's all believe this is because uh, it's not like this guy, it's not like this French guy could be in cahoots with them or anything. You know the problem with magic being performed yeah. in movies. Why? Yes, being performed in movies isn't quite as impressive as seeing it live because seeing it live is actually happening right in front of you. But in the movie, there's all the edits and all the cuts you can do. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that sometimes you specifically are in it to see what it's like from behind the scenes. Anyway, basically they're going to have, uh, they're, they're going to basically use that thing to read his thoughts or something. It, but I mean, isn't guess that gonna, a... I mean, guess the reason they picked this bank is so they could learn his, is so they could learn his information and rob it. Hold on, you'll see. So so let me get... Wait, they're using a device, though. Isn't that technically technology as opposed to magic? Jova, this movie doesn't doesn't really know what it's doing, so don't worry. So you're making a movie based on magic, and you use what is clearly a telekinetic... Well, probably not telekinetic, but uh, clearly a mechanical no, device. That's, bu that's bullshit. That's bullshit of the highest order right there. What? Oh, but don't you know, Pedro? It's magic! Uh, and, 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 by, and by the way, Dwebs, um, in case you're wondering, uh, the Simpsons narrator said, uh, no. <laughs> no. Ding. Yeah, this is totally magic. No use of electronic devices whatsoever. Except that electronic device he's wearing on his head. Okay, 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 look. I wouldn't have as much of an issue with this if they, you know, specifically... Oh. oh. Wow, that 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 that's shot you over up. <laughs> there is at the same moment, and now he's in Paris. What? How? how so he... it's actual magic? No, 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 Jova. If you're expecting them to do something else similar to the Prestige, no, 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 no. It's not. It, there's no point where they create a real magic. How did he? How did he get from Las Vegas to? Paris. I'm sure they'll explain that eventually. By the way, my my video buffered for a bit. Where are you guys? 2104 5, 6, never mind. No, no, never, mind. Never, never, never mind. I'm where you guys are. That's strange. It seemed to buffer for a bit, but whatever. So, are they ever going to actually explain how this stuff goes or is it going to be like certain plots that completely forget about it? Oh, Jova, you must be a fucking wizard. Because, oh, yes, that's no, 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 please. Wow. I mean, come on! There's so much potential right. to actually show how right. they did this. Well, stop Basically, like this. Well, well okay, okay. Actually, oh, oh, oh I don't. I'm sorry. I thought you meant something. Yes, they are going to explain how they did this, but other but stuff this, or not. 
Well, they don't explain everything, but some of them do. They do. But Pedro, that's an excuse because magic. Ah, okay. See, look, okay, I'd buy it if... Okay, okay, see, look, I'd buy it if, like, some of the magic was, say, well, you know, obviously fake, like, will they explain? I mean, I mean, I mean, real, and that would actually explain it. But when you're having a movie specifically based around magic, you know, not being real, you kind of need to explain it eventually, each one. They're going to explain this one, at least, so it's just wait a bit. Fair enough. Although the other stuff, wait. Oh my god, that looked like that scene from Batman Begins with the bats. Except this time it's with money! So does this mean that that guy will strike vengeance and become money man? I don't know. AJ. And there you go, there you go. All the money is gone. Except, except of course we left a card by the four horsemen. AJ, hey do you think this money is actually the budget of the movie? So yeah, basically, basically Joba, this is what the, these, the four horsemen do. They create uh, high... Crimes right in front of everybody. Oh, oh, so there's specific. Oh, so it's like a show using magic to pull for crime. How are they yeah, not it, right? That's exactly but, interesting. But, the, but, the, but that's the thing, they do it right here in front of everybody. How are they not arrested? I'm guessing uh, that because they have they, a jurisdiction what, because they have. Actually, this is a, is a thing. They are going to get arrested uh, by Mark Ruffalo, but guess what happens? He lets them go. No, no, no. They escape through magic. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. wait. Let me get this straight. They're doing this and they don't even have jurisdiction to do it? Because, you know, nope. when you do this sort of stuff, you usually get political permission. That's why we have sometimes... No, 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 no. You, see, you, see, you see, the main point of these shows is to, you know, uh, cause a commotion and shit. So, let There's me get... There's Mark the... Yeah. So, let me get this straight. They cause don't... commotion across the globe. So, the Hulk big... actor is being directed by the Hulk. Hey, look, it's the actor from The Prestige. It's not from The Prestige. It's the actor from um, Person of Interest. Basically, there's this guy that we just saw uh, with the gun right there. Uh, he's he's going to be uh, uh, an important character in season one of Person of Interest. I was going to say, Pedro, I, I noticed something. Yes. The director of this movie directed The Incredible Hulk and Mark Ruffalo plays the Hulk. So, well, but it wasn't in that movie, though. That was Edward Norton. Yeah, I know, but it's kind of interesting to think about. There you go, Dwebs. They were arrested. Okay. You know, okay, I can buy them escaping arrest, and I can buy maybe them doing this, but here's what I don't get. If they're, like, you know, to the point where they're wanted criminals, how the heck do so many of these shows let them on? I mean, look. I don't care how corrupt you say it is. There's no way. Well, that's any... a that show that we just saw was their first, I, I think. Oh. So, is there even any point to why they're doing this then? If this is their first time, they're gonna explain. They're gonna explain everything in the end. Oh, okay then. I guess this is one I... of those movies where I'll have to just hold in my particular criticism until the end. Well, at least on that matter. And. Hello, older-looking version yeah. of Emily Walters. Yeah, this is a, a French cop from Interpol who's come to basically help Mark Ruffalo decipher the case. Alma Dre, played by Melanie Laurent. Melanie All right. Laurent. She's a French actress. Well, that makes sense, since she's supposed to be a French character. Yeah. And um, a previous filmography includes a lot of French films. All right, then. Uh, oh, she's in Inglorious Bastards. Oh, awesome. Ooh, I love that movie. Nice. That's the secret, uh, miss. I'm always angry. And also, oh, oh, she was in the French dub of Inside Out. Uh, 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 hold on, hold on, does. Let me guess. They're going to get away because of a lack of evidence. Because magic! Hold on. I don't know. Mark, oh, he so. was hypnotized. Yeah, it, there you go. Good call, Jova. Mm. Basically, the webs, they hypnotized him. He didn't know what I was doing. Except the problem is that, like, much like the Cinema Sins video points out very well, uh, when you see the flashback that shows how they hypnotized him, the way Woody Harrison hypnotizes him makes no sense. That's not how hypnosis works. But well, hold on, I'll, you, you guys will be able to see for yourselves. Even Mark is going, I can believe this Again, shit. Again, guys, get it? It's funny because the director's French. 
Whoa, then this guy would have a field day if he had to visit a Quantic Dream office. Wow, Dave's just as bored of this movie as I am. Dave? Dave, Dave Frank Franco. Where is... He was there, sleeping oh, there. Oh, he was. Yeah, you're right. Oh my god, her accent yeah, sounds got... similar to David Cage's. Well, she's French. Well, I mean, no, 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 no. What I mean is like when Michael, it's like specifically similar to how David Cage enunciates. Like, you know how he tends to enunciate different from like you, you, the usual French person? Yeah. yeah. Look, I was in person of interest and I'm in here, okay? So but please bear with my bad mood. Which was also, um, well, okay, I think it was Abrams, the producer, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But basically, Jonathan uh, created the show, and uh, he presented the concept of Abrams. And Abrams, since he's a big uh, authority in TV, uh, he was the one who helped get the project off the ground. Okay. And Abrams actually, com uh, believe it or not, wrote the intro. So, so Zuckerberg here is a magician. Uh, 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 remember, this is not Social Network. I know it's hard to believe, but no, we're not watching Social Network again. This is the sequel to Social Network I never wanted. <laughs> <laughs> but Dwebs, but Dwebs, it can't be. Because there are actually some characters here that actually don't make you want to punch the computer screen. Where is no, the no. That makes you want to fall asleep on the computer screen. So I guess <laughs> that's an improvement from Social Network. Keep, keep it together, Dwebs. Uh, try not to make a repeat of uh, Mirror Mirror. Where I fell asleep. <laughs> and we had to make two separate endings of that. Yep. Uh, I, I gotta love how Mark is still doing his um, Bruce Banner persona. I'm actually, I, I, actually, I think that's a standard voice now that I think about it. Boy, Mark Ruffalo and Woody Harrelson. You know, this should be an awesome scene. And it's not. Basically, Mark is trying to get out of them how they exactly did they do it and where the money is. Which Mark? Mark Zuckerberg or Mark, Mark Ruffalo? Ma Ma Mark Ruffalo. Let's call him Jesse for now on. Yeah, okay. let's call him Jesse for now on. Get it? They're trying to hint at the fact there's gonna be a romance. I'm just explaining to you guys because, you know, that writing was so subtle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, hey, no, I think I've noticed that Mark Ruffalo and Woody Harrelson seem to be the two characters who are the most closest, you know, practically breaking the fourth wall, pointing out just what the heck's going on here. Which actually, uh, which actually makes them keen compared to all the other characters in my book. Because this is the kind of movie that's just seriously, shaggy. Jesse, slow down. Yeah, you know, I, you, you know, was I he think I've from the speed that he was given while filming Social Network. You know, I think I realized what's really missing for a movie based on magic. I think this movie could have really used its own personal Deadpool, shall we say? You know, I mean, because this screams like the kind of movie that just feels incomplete without somebody just winking at the audience every few bits. Mm -hmm. Basically, the way it's going on is Mark Ruffalo is not going to get the truth out of any of them, so he's going to have to go to Morgan Freeman to explain it to him. Because as, we, as we've already said, every time something Cavalier needs explaining, Morgan Freeman will show up so he can get another freckle. Well, will Morgan Freeman at least get to join in on some of the action? Uh, sorry, Jova, but no. Does Michael uh, Caine? No. Oh, oh, come on! So, okay! So even though they're in the movie frequently enough, you don't even have Morgan Freeman and Michael came from when the heavy stuff hits. Look. They're the, the, the focus is pretty much uh, Mark Ruffalo and the Four Horsemen. Again, yeah. why the heck didn't they make Michael Caine and Morgan Freeman part of the main protagonist? I mean, what? It was like look, the, look did, at I, him. did I press the fast forward button by Whoa. mistake? Oh boy, Jesse's uh -oh. doing it again. He's talking fast. Oh, and he put him <laughs> in the handcuffs. 
Get it? Because magic. You see, Dwibs, this is going to be one of those movies that's going to keep throwing you the... the. It's magic. We don't have to explain it, excuse. Oh, great. Look, I get it. Magic is a mystical element, and it can be used for a lot of things because, well, at some points, it really is just magic. But here's an issue. This is like if a Professor Layton plot, you know, tried to, you know, explain everything. I'd just walk out of prison. But, okay, okay, okay. Allow me to put it in terms like this. You know what uh, Professor Layton does? Is nobody whole... going to stop them? Are they well, breaking out, or do you just let them walk out? Well, uh, no. well from what I can understand, well, I have, they had to it, let them it, go. It was more like, they, they basically, they, they had to, hold on. <laughs> okay, basically they, they have to let it's like Jova said, they basically have to kind of let them go because they don't have evidence. Yeah. Wait, well, what happened to the audience? No, no. Evidence. No, 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 no. They have witnesses to it. They have witnesses to it, but they have no evidence. I meant I meant this guy mentioned something happened to the audience of that show earlier. Yeah, basically the audience uh, disappeared. No, they, 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 they can't get in contact with the people who were in that show. Guys. And before you ask, no, they're not going to explain that. Oh. Fuck. Hi, Morgan. So, yeah, basically, uh, Morgan Freeman plays Thaddeus Bradley, uh, one, uh, a magician veteran. Nice. I'll wait till Morgan Freeman's done talking till I give there, my piece. There, that, 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 there, there you go, uh, Jova. Uh, believe it or not, Morgan Freeman just turned water into wine. Well, he what? was God. He was God in, in Bruce Almighty, so, so why makes not? sense. I suppose. Again, I say, you're really missing a lot of potential here with, you know, not having Morgan Freeman as one of the main leads. I mean, look, I okay, I get it. You can't always have him at the lead, but this seems like a movie that, you know, feels like it was planning to have him at the lead, but then some last-minute change or whatever just bumped him but down to side. I mean, the fact that he's a I mean, veteran I mean, magician as well... I mean, I mean, he was a scientist in in Batman Begins and Dark Knight, but in, even in Dark Knight, he helped Batman uh, during the climax by, by doing that uh, monitor thingy. Yeah. And in the third movie, he helped out a lot, too. So I wonder, I mean, why push him to the side in this movie? Because um, apparently Jesse Eisenberg's where the money's at. Well, not just that, well, not just that, but the fact that they even make him a veteran but magician. You, but, uh, James, but, but, but don't you see? I, uh, it's good to act like this because it, uh, it's so wonderful. It is witty. It is wonderful. To see, I could I could talk like that. I mean, I'd struggle a little bit, but even I can do that. Why am I getting filmed? This is basically oh, wait, just hold on. I think acting he's explaining. mode. Talk like a body has a pepper on his ass. <laughs> he thinks he has to force Morgan Freeman to talk. All right, so we're going to explain that trick now. Okay, I haven't seen much of him so far, but I'll give it to this Morgan Freeman for what he has to work with is doing a pretty good job creating a well, charismatic what, character. What, what exactly has Morgan Freeman looked bad exactly? He, even in bad movies, he always at least, uh, comes out with dignity. Was he like, did, he, did he manage to hold that dignity for transcendence? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He did. Yeah, Pedro's a point. I mean, he's one of those actors who he's so charismatic that he can even make terrible writing seem somewhat okay with. So this he's thing. like the Black Patrick Stewart. Yeah, pretty much. Didn't Patrick Stewart look bad in one film? I forget. Oh, uh, uh, Jova, this is the part we're looking forward to. Oh, giddy! All right, so let's explain exactly what they did. There we go. Basically, it's a trapdoor. So the bank's rightful. There you go. The, the guy was never in Paris. They just created uh, an exact replica of that vault. So all the people who came in there were actors. Basically, what we're what they were everybody was seeing in the video cameras was just here. This. There you go. Now you're probably wondering. 
Well, in that case, how come when the when the French people went to see the actual bank and there was no money there? Well, wait, 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 wait. Oh, go on. <laughs> hey, let pay attention. No way. Yes, they basically they subliminally messaged him uh, the so he would be here in the show. <laughs> that's how. That's so what. They, that's how he, they hypnotized there you go. See, see, see that, 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 that was the hypnosis thing. Woody Harrelson just uh, whispered in his ear, then snapped his fingers, and boom, hypnotized. Because that's how hypnosis works, right? <laughs> okay, just to point out. And it was right there in the... Okay, this is going to be amazing. Because this movie is so fucking stupid. But go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Chopa. All right. Just to point out, you know, hypnotism can be a real thing, but it usually takes at least hours, if not days, to mentally condition someone to do something properly. And they somehow managed to do it in a few blinks of an eye. There you go. Basically, Morgan Freeman's theory is that while the trick was going on, someone was still in the bank. Um, just, once again, Morgan Freeman shines because, you know, this sort of explanation sounds so stupid, we should all be raging at this point. Now, usually when I watch this, I just laugh it off because this movie is trying so hard to be clever and it completely falls flat on its face. Okay, 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 to be fair. But I mean, I guess to be, yeah, I mean, I guess to be fair, though, I mean, what I mean is like, well, Morgan Freeman actually makes it sound somewhat competent because... So yeah, uh, so yeah, this. What's your, what are your thoughts on all this? You haven't been saying much. Squibs? Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, for a moment there, I thought he fell asleep. No, 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 no. I was just um, sorting some stuff out. So, Dwibs, what do you think of this intricate master plan? Well... Exactly. And... There you go. Wait. Basically... I got one. What? Uh... Magic fire! <laughs> Ugh. You know, this is starting to get even more convoluted than a latent plot when it comes to explaining away all the magic. You know, uh, 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 trust me, Joe, if you think it's convoluted now, wait till you see the pl the end game plot twist. <laughs> oh, hey, it's that guy in the news I like. Conan, what are you doing here? Brian? Conan? Yeah. What are you doing here? <laughs> oh, and Michael King's in on it? Okay. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this moment with Conan being funny because uh, he's actually <laughs> the best actor in this movie. Well, not the best actor. He's actually the, the funniest guy in this movie. <laughs> really? Yes. Well, he's he's Conan O'Brien, Jova. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Conan O'Brien, Stephen Colbert, those guys are riots. Question to Have you ever seen uh, Conan O'Brien's uh, video game reviews? Yeah, I have. They're oh, hilarious. oh yeah, that's right. It does video game reviews. I need to get around to those. Looking at those, it, 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 I, I love it when he gets to the point where he gives a score because it's so random. <laughs> anyway, by the way, uh, I, I, allow me to ask a question. We're forty minutes into the movie. Um, oh, are we going to ask, are we going to actually develop the characters at some point? Oh my god, you're right. We're forty minutes in, and like. Okay, so like um over the first seven minutes we're like literally dedicated to just getting the movie to the opening title. And then after that we've just been focusing on this one trick they played. So are they the bad guys then? Uh you'll you'll see the big picture when we get to the big plot twist, Joba. Oh Don't right. making it sound about the tiny details. It's about the big picture. <laughs> I guess I have to wait till the next Morgan Freeman scene because so far Morgan Freeman scenes are definitely the best. Well, except for that Conan O'Brien part. That was pretty awesome.
How will you two just kiss already? Jova, <laughs> <laughs> we got like an hour and twenty oh, come minutes on. of film left. Oh, 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 come on, Jova. What makes you think these two are going to get together? I hmm. mean, it's. Uh, I mean, oh, wait, never mind. The movie flat out told us that they're going to... <laughs> so, Dwibs, how, how long do you estimate we'll have to wait till they finally get to it and get up through with the no, car no, no. teasing? Actually, 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 Jova, here's the interesting thing. Why? Um, they only kiss, they, they don't perk each other throughout the entire movie, and they only kiss at the very end of the movie. Excuse That's me for a moment. <laughs> I think this movie's getting to Jova. A little bit. <sighs> oh, sweet rich lemonade I needed that. Oh, hey, um, Jesse. Yeah. You know, lemonade's great. You can drink it like booze, but you don't have to worry about the hangover. Yeah, you just gotta worry about the bad teeth. <laughs> and luckily, I brush twice a day. Well, oh, of course they're well, tricks. Magic. They're Okay, Jesse, stop it. You're not clever or charming with that. Try something, try a different delivery, please. So, let me guess. Michael Caine's like their big uh, operator from behind the scenes. Okay, Paige, you just, have, you, just have, you just maybe had this funny thought. What? Someone asks him to have a different delivery, and so he says, okay. And he just does the same thing. To the point <laughs> they just say, oh, well, I give up. Oh, great. Eisenberg's trying to trash talk Michael Caine, of all people. This should be interesting. Oh, and Michael Caine, of course, rebounds him. Uh, guys? Yes? What are we doing right now? I mean, right, don't uh, get me wrong, I like uh, Michael Caine well, uh, and all, that, 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 that's, that's an interesting thing, Jova. This scene seems really pointless, but it's actually going to be really important for later on. Just what? so, just all that thought. So, they're trading quips. They're, I can't wait to see how this comes back into the plot well, later. Well, that's the thing, Jova. Uh, that's kind of the... Uh, whenever an, a director wants, needs an... Okay, I need an actor who can speak bullshit, uh, talk bullshit, and talk it really fast. Get me Jesse Eisenberg. Oh. But, sir, but sir, the audience may not be able to understand him. I don't care. Just get me someone who can talk like they like like they are about to. That, that's the basic thing. Jesse Eisenberg. Every time he speaks in this movie, he always seems like he's a, he really needs to take a shit really badly. <laughs> so you told me that that last scene's gonna be important. So let me guess. Is this? So let me guess. This movie's um, modus operandi this, when it comes to this, say this, um, movie, this movie basically has a lot of moments where ah, turns out this was actually happening. Oh, oh, I get it, I get it. So let me guess, let me go. So like, scenes like that one where they were talking, they'll turn out to be important. I'm guessing that yeah. this movie tries to be clever by saying, hey, well, like you I know, you really were paying attention to the more important scenes, but it turns out that this less important looking scene there actually was know. important, which it, actually like, does like seem said, like a creative thing to do, only this seems like the wrong kind of movie to be doing it in. Like I said before, this is the kind of movie that tries way too hard to be clever for its own good. Yeah, yeah. It's Did like you see you... this in the cinema? No, I saw it. I, I catched it by random on the TV. And this is the thing. I actually didn't even know this movie existed until I randomly saw it on TV. Yeah. Was it dubbed in Portuguese? No, 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 no. We don't. We, the only movies we dub are animated movies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know, hey, no, hey, no, now that you mentioned it, yeah, now that I think about it, that is one of this movie's leading problems. It's like, when you think about it, the concept is so simple that if it, it kind of feels like something that you should run simple. I mean, and heck, I mean, and with the casting power you have, I don't think having this movie being simple would necessarily be a bad thing. Especially since, you know, you're dealing with magic. Um, guys, can I ask a question? Go ahead. What's, what's the plot again? The plot is that we're, uh, Mark Ruffalo is trying to find evidence uh, to to basically imprison the Four Horsemen. That doesn't sound like something you can hang a movie around. Maybe an episode of... Oh, Drips! 
but that's the thing, dude. There's something else going on behind the scenes that I can tell you because of spoilers. Uh, oh, God, no. They're not going to try it out on another plot that extends the movie, are they? No, 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 Joe, but that's the thing. There's actually two plots going on at the same time, except the second plot is only revealed at the end of the movie. What? what the end of the movie? Uh, uh, you'll see. You'll see. You'll see what I mean when we get there. Okay, fair enough. However, okay. however, however, I, I, even knowing that, though, like you said, it's at the end of the movie. So, as far as any audience goer would know, it's just one plot we're really focusing on. It's a, a basic, of the movie. A basic job. It's one of those things where it's one of those things that uh, it's, this is one of those movies that invites you to watch it a second time after you've seen the twist, so you can notice all the little hints at it. Magic unmasked. That's um, the the show that uh, Morgan, where Morgan Freeman narrates about magic. Uh, you know, I actually wouldn't mind this being a real show if only to hear Morgan Freeman speak every once in a week. Okay, I reckon the I reckon that Fred's girl was working for the magicians. Uh, believe it or not, Webs, that would be a much better plot twist than the one they're going for. Okay, Wait, Marco there actually is a twist involved with her. No, 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 there's no twist involved with her, but the twist that we've just came up with will be much better than the actual big plot twist the movie's building up to. Come to think of it, why is Morgan Freeman in the, even in this film still? I mean, okay, 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 don't get me wrong, I like him as a character, but they've already spoken to his character and also, I mean... Uh, let's just say his character still has a role to play and I'll leave it at that. Alright. Oh! Ladies and gentlemen, Morgan Freeman and Michael Caine, uh, head to head. This is going to be awesome. I like to imagine that this is the, um, mm. I like to imagine that this is the conversation Morgan Freeman had with the director of Momentum. Uh, you mean Memento? No, Michael Caine was not in Memento. No, 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 no. no Momentum, no, no, no. that one, that film that only made like forty pounds. Ah, oh, okay yeah. then. You see, Master Wayne. Once time, I was in Burma. Oh wait, sorry, wrong movie. Okay, I have to say this is pretty awesome. Well, yeah. Since when are these two actors not awesome? Come to think of it, I don't think I ever really saw them in the same room together in the Batman films. Uh, they were at one point. Uh, I think uh, in Dark, Dark Knight Rises, if I remember. That that, that that movie's very forgettable, so I don't really remember much. Ah, uh, poor Dark Knight Rises. That movie has. Let's, let's not be too off topic, though, because. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm just saying. Oh yeah, never mind. We'll talk about that when we get to that film. I'm sorry. Was there a plot here? I'm just uh, getting distracted by the awesomeness in the room. Basically, uh, Morgan Freeman is asking him what exactly is he up to financing the um, the Four Horsemen, and he's saying that uh, basically he get, uh, he gets to win a lot of money with these uh, with uh, the publicity and shit. So it kind of isn't that kind of something that goes without saying that you know he gets money out of the deal. Yeah. Uh, 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 sorry, I did fell asleep. What? Dwibs. Do I need to go over there to stoke and slap you? Dwibs, it's a scene with Michael Caine and Morgan Freeman together. And I fell asleep. That's pretty bad. That's oh, okay. great. We're uh, talking about oh, sex. Oh, look. Uh, Mark, oh, sorry, uh, Jesse Eisenberg uh, is not amused. Now, I probably will going to ask this. When is he ever amused? Uh, yeah, his acting. Yeah, his acting range from what I've seen of his films so far is so limited. I'm surprised. I, I, I would be surprised if he can't smile. What Jesse Eisenberg? That his character seems to smile a bit too much, if you ask me. Seriously, Joe, but all I've seen him is that face throughout most of the movie. You know, really, you haven't seen him with the smug smirk when he's acting like a wise ass. No. This is not really. This movie's not really grabbing dwebs at all. So, does this, not... this movie ever grab anyone? Well, from well, what I can well, understand, this movie is something of a cult following. But that's really what it has—a cult following. And even still, from what I hear, that cult following doesn't really find it a legitimately good movie. All the same. I mean, 
Okay, I'll give it some of this. It does have a lot of good ideas, and it actually does manage to present some of those good ideas. But the main issue is like, well, those good ideas are sort of um, over encompassed. And, Kingdom you know, Hearts. Eh? No, 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 no! You misunderstood what this said was. <laughs> you wish. All right, Webs. Now you see those cards. Mm-hmm. Suck it. Ha 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 ha. You see, you see it, Webs. We now we, he's officially become Mark Zuckerberg too. He can even magically be an asshole. <laughs> wow! Finally, people who actually encourage us to upload and record. Can you imagine a cinema that does that? <laughs> Hey guys, I know we're meant to keep this movie a secret, but please film it. Hey, gu hey guys, this. come on down. We're showing Star Wars Episode 8. Make sure to bring your camera and bring an HD rescaler. Because we're allowing you to upload this to YouTube! But sir, uh, won't that mean people won't even bother going to cinema? Oh, but you see, by actually not encouraging the rage of WTFU, we are actually using subliminal messaging to convince them that we're on their side. And then they'll come to see it still. And then the chain went boss two months later. Actually, when you think about it, they'd probably get a lot of revenue out of the many people who would want to try and cash in on, you know, being able to sponsor it on YouTube. Oh. Don't worry, guys. Uh, it's not that important. All right, Show here we time. go. So, where are they now, anyway? Location was. Uh, right now they. I think they're in America. I think. Well, I meant. I don't know. States. I don't know. Okay. Oh boy. My god, even his girlfriend is all smug and annoying. Well, um, I guess they kind of match. You know, Woody Harrelson, and I guess, is kind of classy when he does the whole dick thing. I, 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 I don't know, Woody Harrelson sounds like kind of bored. <laughs> I guess that's kind of what gives him a bit of an edge. It's like, oh, he sounds like the kind of guy who's bored with it because, oh, it's so beneath him. He's a pro at this. It's like he's done this so many times at this point. All right. And yet, surprisingly, it sort of makes him the most likable of the magicians, in my opinion. Well, out of the four, anyway. If we're counting all magicians, Morgan Freeman's the best. All right, Twips. Uh, uh -huh. we're, we're going to make this bunny disappear. Oh, great. Hey, wait first. a minute. Come. Oh, wait, nah. For an apparently revolutionary show, this isn't exactly very revolutionary. It's like the oldest trick in the book. I'm guessing this could be a special twist oh. on it. There you go. Where's the bunny dwebs, might you ask? Um, someone's actually eaten it or something. Let's see. Uh, yes! Apparently hypnosis is just touching someone's shoulder and say, sleep! <laughs> That's how hypnosis works, right? There you go, there's basically the box had a false uh, wall. There you go. The oldest trick in the book, like you said. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Uh, go ahead, Job. I know you're hacking to explain how this hypnosis is bullshit. <laughs> Well, I kind of already did, but yeah, I'll state it again. Ha okay, look, this would make sense if maybe you already, you know, put some sort of trigger on all these people. Oh, wait, let me guess. They met these people somewhere outdoors. They did, haven't they? Uh, they never explained that, so I... Oh! 
Oh, okay, never mind. It's never <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're doing creating bubbles out of thin air. Yeah. Pick up the cards. Uh, are they? Right. Yeah, Force you're gonna be wing. you're gonna be collaborating with us in our evil ski. I mean, uh, join our next magic show. Uh, no. Well, I'm sure there's some special effects we're gonna explain later, right? Or is this uh, one of those many uh, unexplained uh, things? Funny thing, Job. Uh, no, they don't. Okay, look again. I state, why even? Is she, okay, oh. okay. Is she a Disney princess now? She's in a bubble. She's being saved by a man from okay. falling. Oh, maybe that bubble was real. Ugh. Okay, here's the issue. It's like there needs to be a sense of boundary. It's like, well, if you're, and that's this movie thing. Because like, well, this movie seems to have the theme of you know explaining how each trick is done. So I ask, if you're gonna have these major tricks, why not show us how everything is done? It's not like they can give the excuse that it would take a while. I mean, they could clearly just do that Morgan Freeman thing again and just explain Lickety Split away. Oh, hang on, I just remembered something. Oh, no, uh, this is important. There we go. Oh, boy, now he's doing the John Edward thing. Great. Okay, basically, they're, he's asking these people to pay, check their phones for their uh, bank account. Again, a money thing. I was going to say, Woody Harrelson and Jesse Eisenberg, second time they've been in a movie together since Zombieland. Ah, Zombieland. One of the few times we're just okay, guys, guys, remember, got to play okay, guys, a okay, nice guys, person. Okay, guys, remember that money that they uh, st quote unquote stole uh, from the French bank? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, guess where that money's going? Here? Oh, wait, to their accounts! There you go. So, wait, are they like, steal from the rich and give to the poor? Kind of, I guess. Hey, wait a minute. Now that I think about it, if they supposedly stole the money from the Paris bank, then what the heck was that money even doing in their fake bank? Or did they just steal it already and then put it in there for the sake of the trick to show that they did steal it because they want to show that they have such big dicks? Uh, there you go, Jova. So, let me get this straight. They steal money in an ingenious scheme and yet clearly risk it by revealing, Hey, we managed to pull this off by stealing it all. Don't you see it, but don't you see it, Jova? We have to make the plot as, as overly convoluted as possible to distract the, uh, the audience from the fact that it, this makes no sense. Oh, I can't wait to see the twist that makes us all supposedly legit. Oh, Michael Caine! Ooh, that's a big check. Let me guess, they're gonna try and act like Michael Caine's donating it! Uh... Hold on. You'll see, Joe, hold on. Here we go. Cute. Big flashing light. And apparently this happens. Invisible ink? No, the, see, see, uh, the number appeared on her paper, so... There you go, Dwebs. Magic, ma pure ma magic money transfer. <laughs> so, the number appeared, though, I mean, well, they must have been using magical ink to write it on, right? 
You see, Dwebs, in the future, we don't use ATMs, we use magic. Of course. Uh, no, no, I'm serious. That was magic disappearing ink they used to reveal it, right? I don't know, Joe, but they don't explain it. What? Uh, well, it's but, magic, so, but, um... But this is a Jova, major Jova, plot point. Jova, 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 it's magic. We don't have to explain it. But but they've been going out of their way to explain most of the magic up to this point, and now all of a sudden they're just deciding to run with the it's magic we don't have to explain it? Well, they do kind of explain uh, one thing, but you'll see, hold on. Well, one thing. It's like, okay, okay, okay. I get what, you, okay, I get what you're saying. M my main issue is like, well... Okay, I can get maybe not explaining everything, but a lot of the stuff is major plot details, and from what I hear, a lot are just going to get brushed off to the side. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go. Uh, how do you know they're also getting money? <laughs> I guess that's smart, so they're going to spread the money across accounts so it can't get tracked. So yeah, basically what they did was they took money from uh, his account and put it uh, on the, each of these people's accounts. So they hate him all of a sudden now? You'll see, hold on. There you go. See, basically, all that bickering in the plane... That was them getting information about their his account without him noticing. So now he's been. So, so there you go. That, that that so there you go. Now you know what the fuck was the point with that of that scene in the plane. So let me get this straight. They're vigilantes who get bad guys caught. Not bad guys caught. They just steal money and give it to people. And <laughs> and of course, before okay. tackling them, because they and got now, us money. And now they they, they escape like like Shaquille O'Neal does in Steel. <laughs> pa, and why is everybody? And now it's what well, apparently uh, uh, there you go. That's why they hypnotized those people. He hypnotized them so that they would uh, all fall on top of Mark Ruffalo, so he wouldn't catch them. <laughs> So, let me get this straight. They stole money from a Paris account, worked with Michael Caine, just so they could betray him and give money to common people. Not even specifically poor people, because I'm pretty sure you had to be rich to attend one of these shows, but just oh, people Jova. in general. Wait. I fear for your reaction at the plot twist. <laughs> oh, it can't get any more stupid than this. Uh, I'm not saying anything more because I've, I've pretty much already said all, everything I can say. All now, right. Okay, guy from Persons of Interest, just call your friend and have him sort out the issue. Oh, wait, sorry, wrong series. Well, actually, Dwebs, uh, that guy is supposed to be one of the bad guys from season one. Uh, you, you've only seen the first three episodes, so you haven't met him yet. I've seen the first. I've seen three more after that. Ah, okay. Then maybe you've seen him. Maybe you've not. I don't remember if he's if he's already in the sixth episode or not. Uh, I I would have to go and check again. It's been a while since I saw season one. Yeah, I could definitely tell this is a Brian Tyler score. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. The use of yeah. percussion drums. Oh, poor Mark Ruffalo. <laughs> well, at least Mark Ruffalo is trying. Oh yeah. Lord knows, a lot of these people were trying, so... so I by, by, by the way, uh, my video... Uh, this time it actually didn't need buffer for a bit. Where are you guys? One hour and five minutes, 20, 30 seconds, 31, 32... Yeah, I'm like, I'm like two seconds behind. Give me a moment. Oh, and boobs! Yay, boobs, because we needed that. What was this movie rated? PG-13? All right, I'm at uh, one hour, five minutes, and 45 seconds. Just oh, we in. just passed that. Fuck. Uh, Go ahead to one hour, six minutes, and 30 seconds. I'm at... Uh, hold on. I'm at one hour, six minutes, and 25 seconds. Okay. <laughs> Gladly it's now loading more faster, so it shouldn't should be the last time. Just keep going. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, right now there's only a chase scene going on. Yep.
and I will give it this. It's actually something of an interesting chase scene. Oh, it may have just come to an end. And click. Thank you. Yes, what are <laughs> you doing? Worst chaser ever. I mean, come on, Interpol. You had the guy, and you didn't even read him his rights. You just... Yeah, the know. right to remain silent. Every, yeah, the right to remain silent. Everything you say will be used against your career. You didn't Probably. even. Yeah, she didn't even yell freeze. What is even going on here? Okay, basically, somebody is uh, jamming his signal into basically, um, you know, uh, make him. Uh, but basically, they they threw him off track by uh, jamming his signal and shit. Huh. I wish the movie had been a bit more clear about that. Uh, Jova, I can explain. I can explain to you. It's magic. So you're telling me they use magic to jam a signal? No. Is that uh, actually going to be their excuse? No, they don't give any excuse. I'm just going for the movie's logic. The movie's oh. been using magic as its explanation for everything. Oh, never mind. So you're just filling in the blanks. I. I mean, the movie doesn't bother, so... Oh, and by the way, Dwebs, guess what? Yeah, uh, uh, sorry. And by the way, Dwebs, guess what? Being He's a cop, so, and he drinks alcohol. Oh, boy. Oh. Totally, uh, you've never seen a cop character be, you know, uh, a, a drunk or, 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 or tortured or anything like that, right? Oh, no, it's ballistic again. <laughs> oh. Hello. By the way, Dwebs, uh... If it <laughs> By the way, Dwebs, uh, as a good, that would, this should be a good way to keep you maybe a little more awake. Uh, could you check for us if the same writers from this movie are coming back for the sequel? From what I've seen, yet one of them is at least. Oh, hey, Morgan. So, uh, is Michael Caine still going to be in this movie? Because it looks like his character arc may have... Uh... Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, Michael Caine. Oh, there he is. Oh, never mind, yeah. <laughs> Drinking it up. Yeah, I know the feeling, pal. Um, one of the writers is the same, but there's a new one as well. Pete Chiar Chiarelli. Chiarelli. Don't know who I'm... Oh, Morgan Freeman and Michael Caine are returning for the sequel. That'll be nice, since they're quite honestly the best things for me in this movie. It'll be interesting to see... No, how hold on, hold on. Basically, he's saying that uh, don't you see, don't you get it, Michael? You're the abracadabra. Don't you mean the turn, Ma uh, Morgan? <laughs> <laughs> the only movie that this guy's written before is oh, called The Proposal. I don't hey know guys, that. speaking of now, you see me too. Well, uh... what? Uh, lines get revealed. The details. Blah, blah, blah. CEO John Feinberg announced that they've already begun early planning for Now You See Me Free. Seriously? They're going to try to turn this into a long-running franchise? Apparently. The second movie isn't even out yet. Whoa. And this movie, and this, okay, okay, I get that this movie made money, but really? Uh, uh, f free fucking movies? I mean, what, was they, what, what, were they always planning on having a trilogy from the beginning? They couldn't have been because, That's, like, because this movie, trust me, the way this movie ends, it doesn't at all do a sequel hook or anything. It doesn't at all seem like it's hinting at a sequel at all. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, okay, best case in scenario. Um, they saw this movie got mixed reception and thought that they could make it better with the sequel. So, oh, hopefully, by the way, Joe, wait, hold on. Uh, uh, this is the romance scene of the movie. Wait, I thought she said they only kiss at the end. Oh, no, they aren't going to. No, 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 don't worry. He's not going to do anything. He's just uh, putting the, the blanket over her. Aw, she's so and, cute and, when she's asleep. And that's pretty much it. That's the romance. Him putting the blanket <sighs> over that's the ro that, That's the character development for the romance, people. Hope you enjoyed it. <sighs> Which is a shame, because, like, well, they do have some chemistry, it's just they haven't really, you know, proceeded upon the romance. But, which well, is jo apparently... well, of course they have chemistry, Joe, but the fucking movie itself said there's tension between you guys. 
Hey, Dweebs, did you know, whenever you have tension with uh, someone, that means you are bound to be their lover. Wait, what was that? Sorry, I was uh, I nodded off again. Okay, oh, Dweebs, I, Dweebs, I, apparently this movie's teaching you a cycle. If you have tension with anyone, that means you're going to be in love with them. Oh, look! The whole arrive in the doorway with your clothes provocative thing. Yeah, you're totally not setting up a romance for them. <laughs> <laughs> Make up your mind. Are you a researcher? Are you an Interpol agent? Are you some femme fatale? Are you fucking Donald Duck? <laughs> Basically, Joma, she's whatever the plot requires her to be. Oh, so when's she gonna be Melanie Griffith? <laughs> Okay, basically, he's, they're reading a book about the eye. What is the eye, you ask? Basically, you might have noticed how all those cards um, about the four horsemen, that even the cards that invited them to that place at the beginning of the movie have an eye. Well, mm -hmm. basically, that the eye thing uh, is, uh, according to the, to the Interpol agent here, it's some kind of uh, secret magic organization, uh, and she suspects that they might be behind this, basically. Yeah. Hey, Dwebs. Hmm? Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> nice. Hey, Dwebs, uh, guess what? More romance coming! <sighs> Does romance put you to sleep even more? Not, not, I tell you, Jova, not since... Oh, okay. I tell you, Jova, not since Casablanca have uh, chemistry between an act a woman and a man been so palpable. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, Casablanca... That's got nothing on this romance here. What do you think, Twibs? Twibs uh, has never seen Casablanca, so. Ah. Uh, David Jobos is having the most pleasant dream. Were let you me guess. dreaming you dream of? Uh, let, me guess, let, let me guess. You dreamt that uh, there's n that there's not going to be a now. You see me to Norfrey. Actually, I was dreaming. I was watching Batman vs Superman. Ooh, oh, was it good? Oh. Was it was the movie good in your dream? Um. It ended with Jesse Eisenberg being squashed by Batman. Oh, so that's oh, how right. he becomes so, bald. Well, 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 it's already better than um, yeah, than, than Men of Steel by default because of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so basically, he just figured out that there's apparently there's cell phones. There you go. Basically, uh, with Jesse Eisenberg it put in a transmitter on his cell phone, and that's how they always knew where he was. Hey, Dwibs, get out your cell phone. Maybe it might be connected to all this. Uh, uh, Quick, Jova, check your, check your bank account for your phone. Maybe there's some money put in there by the four horsemen. Oh my god! There is absolutely nothing more or less! Oh no, look, Jesse Eisenberg is pissed. Wait, you don't even know who you're working for? No, they don't. What? Basically, jo basically, Jova, they're being told what to do, and if they do all the things properly, then they'll be able to meet uh, the, the guy and enter the I organization. So let me get this straight. This entire movie from the get-go has just been them doing what they've been told without even yes. knowing who's telling them what to do it. Everything. Yes. Stealing the money, giving it to random people, betraying Michael Caine, acting like dicks. Okay, maybe the acting like dicks thing was already a thing they were already doing, but you get the point. But seriously, they've been acting all smart, yet they've just been doing what they're told. Yes. So, uh, they're dummies. Pretty much. There's one guy uh, that's basically the big puppet master of all of this. Uh, I'll I'll only say this one more thing. It's a character you've already seen, and I won't say anything else. I'm not gonna try and guess because I actually want the full impact. So what's even the point yeah. of the, so? Yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. don't get it. What's even the point of four characters of like? Well, I mean, okay, they're just doing what they're told. I mean, at that point. Oh. <laughs> There's not really much to care about with them if they're not even really thinking up their own schemes. Yeah, there's not... Like I said, these characters... They're not characters. They're just plot devices, really. Like, and none they're of, the four leads! That's pretty bad. 
I mean, at mm-hmm. least with the Deadly Six and Sonic Lost World, they weren't, like, you know, the main playable characters. I mean, at least Sonic was fleshed enough out in that game. But here? These are supposed to be our protagonists. And yet, it's like you said, they're just... Well, Mark Ruffalo is more I was like talking the... about the four, I meant. The, the, the four horsemen are more like empty heroes than actual protagonists. Well, when I say protagonists, I mean, like, well, they're the lead characters, I mean, quote, basically, I mean, I mean, okay, 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 I mean, anti or protagonists, but, you know, like, well, when I refer to them as protagonists, I mean, it's, you know, like, well, the main heroes, you know, like, I mean, uh, not main heroes, but the main characters that you focus on for the plot, you know. Oh, the look, Lego! Huh. Apparently, they like pl- uh, building Lego. Hey, uh, Dwibs! Dwibs? I think this fell asleep again. Wait, I don't hear him breathing. Dwibs, wake up! Hey, Dwibs! Drink some coffee or something. Drink some some coffee or something, Jesus. But I I hate coffee. Tea? Will that help you? Oh, no! Guy from Person of Interest is in trouble. There we go. Oh, and of course, not shot. Oh, look, uh, it's the classic uh, gun to the nuts gag. <laughs> you know, this fight scene is not very well shot. Am I even supposed yeah. to be rooting for the magicians? Because if anything, I'm rooting uh, for well, the right FBI now, well, well, right, well, yeah, well, yeah, you're kind of supposed to be rooting for Mark Ruffalo, yeah. Oh, I get that. Well, I mean, it's like, well, I mean... Okay, in a movie like this, usually, of course, you're supposed to root for the good guys, but you do get at least a sense of, you know, wanting to see this continue. Like, well, you know, like, well, of course, you have the Heist Gang, who you're sort of silently rooting for, shall we say. Think of it like with GTA V, how you're clearly going against the law, but you kind of have a reason to root for the free. Oh, look, he disappeared in a curtain. Wow. Okay, look, there's magician stuff, and then there's just cartoony stuff. Yep. Oh, because you know they're trying to turn this into a series. Are they going to make a cartoon of this? Mm-hmm. Taste cards, motherfucker! <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Admittedly, you can... You can apparently... Jesus Christ! I, I mean, cards are not... Okay, they're fucking... Cards, you know, they're made of cardboard. They, 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 I'm pretty sure cards don't hurt that much. Unless they're magical cards that they made specifically for a trick. Although, okay, okay, okay. Admittedly, there are sometimes, sometimes techniques now, to actually Mark make... Ruffalo asked, really? Yeah. yeah. Is that when the main character is pointing out the absurdity of the plot? It's like, oh, okay, I should probably address this. To be fair, some... There are some ways to throw cards in a deadly maneuver. However, that requires extreme precision and a pretty much very specific toss of the arm, which I'm pretty sure that magician is not doing. Uh, all right, guys, uh, keep going. I'll be right back. Sharky. Uh oh. Oh, Dwibs, you're right. This is going very Brian Taylor as. Tyler! Yeah. Hey, look, Dwibs, David Franco's escaping. Woo. Uh, Wow, (laughs) and now we're in GTA territory. Well, I guess, to be fair, more like uh, L.A. Noir territory. What the heck? Yeah. Interesting what? interesting camera movement for a fight scene there. Oh, I guess. It's like, it's like Louis the Terrier was trying to play row, row, row your boat. I'm having trouble even telling if some of these people they're beating up or even FBI agents. I can't say it now. He was going, row, row the camera, left Jet to and right. Left to right across the screen. Merrily, Meryl, fuck it. (laughs) 
Are you? You, you? They're getting away, you moron! <clears throat> I mean, what next? Are they gonna get away? You can have a philosophical discussion of life. <laughs> Where are they? Oh, great. <laughs> Uh, okay, car chase. Yeah, down that. Yeah, down that narrow street. I don't think so. <sighs> okay. So, uh, okay, this yeah. movie's this movie's challenging me. Do See tell. how long I can stay awake. Don't worry, James. If it sounds like you're nodding off, I'll wake you up before it's too late. And oh my god, this looks a bit like that scene from Gotham City in the be in Dark Knight. I guess Louis Leterrier really wants to do that scene himself. <laughs> oh, so they're in New York City again. Alright. Apparently these two cities are connected somehow. You know, it's bad when me, a native of New York State, am not able to recognize New York City from some of your earlier scenes. I mean, come on, it's slipping New York City. But by getting London confused with Gloucestershire. Oh, hello! Now things are getting interesting! And it's with the car chase as opposed to, you know, the actual magic. <coughs> sure, why not? Let's go GTA on this. You know, come to think of it, this chase has been going on for a while. Be thankful right, I'm back. Oh, this scene. Okay. Jennifer, be thankful yeah. you didn't watch the chase scene from Matrix Reloaded with us. Yeah. No, I'm going to have to eventually for a generation's commentary on that. Basically, okay. Um, yeah. This is, yeah, we're still chasing this guy. Uh, Dwebs, uh, you're going to love th like this moment. Hi, Casino Royale. What? Oh, Casino Royale did this? Uh, physics? What the fuck are those? Wait! Look at that! That car is fucking jumping in the air! <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, Pedro, we also talked about that scene where the FBI Interpol agent was literally talking about him trusting her and him literally saying, can't this wait, and her saying no. I mean, it's like, idiot! They're getting away because you want to have some talk to talk. There, there you go, there you go, Dwebs. Dave Franco's character dies. What? Yay! For reals? Oh my god! So, no magic trick? I mean, I know I sound a bit insensitive, but I'm honestly expecting this to all be a magic trick. Nope, he's dead. Okay, yeah, okay, Dweebs, your point about them crying wolf stands, I guess, because I was actually half expecting it to just be another magic trick. <laughs> so, we're down a horseman. Uh, well, well, I guess, um, I guess, uh, Apocalypse. Well, at least the, well, at least the, the drawn out chase scene is done. Oh, Pajova, I guess Apocalypse will have to find another horseman. Ha 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 ha. Get Michael Fassbender. Ho 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 ho. Oh, that could be interesting. Oh no, our so, companions died. We're, uh, oh well, let's move on. Did they even really need the guy, though? I mean, nothing in the instructions seems to state they need all four. And like, well, you know, come to think of it, we barely even focused on Dave Franco's character out of the three. I mean, out of the four. <laughs> yeah. Again, like, I've established maybe is to realize he's such a shitty actor. What? I've actually noticed that from the start, now that I think about it. Mm. 
So there you go. Is- Basically, Morgan Freeman is convinced that uh, uh, the girl is actually uh, a spy, or, or rather a double agent. Rather, sorry. Hmm. He's right, isn't he? I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Okay. Yeah. Another problem? What more? (laughs) Bill Gates? What? No, no, it's not Bill Gates. I'm just making a joke. Oh, I know, I know, I know. I mean, go, I mean, go. I was like saying, it's like, well, yeah, he does look a bit like Bill Gates, but I feel like I should know this actor. I mean, nah, I don't know him. Whatever. One thing for sure, <laughs> the right. plot's actually. Hey, dude, I'm the computer guy, so I know what I'm talking about. So you're going to listen to me, okay? One thing's for sure, the plot seems to certainly want us to believe he's important for some reason. So, basically, they got played like a damn fiddle. They played us like a damn fiddle! Wait, wait, and sorry. was that all sorry. the guy's point? Just to point out, you suck at your jobs, they use your wait, phones no, 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 against no, 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 you? No, question. What is wait, what? wait, guys, I, I missed something. Can we start it again? <laughs> <laughs> so, was that all that guy's point of the movie? Was just to point out that they were, you know, were using their phones against them? Yes. Uh, lady, that doesn't really excuse you possibly being a spy, you know. Wow, um, are we sure this isn't behind the scenes footage that just got put into the movie? We don't really. We're supposed to care about the. So they now we're supposed now? to care about him. I mean, I mean, heck, oh you God, guys, guys, are... guys, I'm, I'm getting this impossible free flashbacks again. Don't worry, Dwebs. Uh, believe it or not, the ending of this movie might just be even more stupid. Oh, great! You know, I wouldn't have as much a problem with this if it weren't for the fact that hey, idiots, you yourselves barely cared about the guy. You see, you see, okay, here, okay, allow me to bring up some, okay, okay, I wouldn't mind suspending my disbelief, uh, if at, if, if there were at least two, one of two things. One, it could at least be somewhat entertaining if the characters were at least interesting, or if the movie didn't take itself seriously and it was kind of, you know, self, um, self, uh, deprecating, then this could have worked better. But no, the, the, I mean, the way it's delivered, Brian Tyler's score, we're clearly supposed to take this seriously, and it just doesn't work. It's like salt all over again. Yeah, yeah. Another issue, now that I think about it, is well, that... There you go. Basically, this guy was also hypnotized. We, they've literally played us like a damn fiddle. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> You know, now that I think about it, yeah, it's a good point you made, Paige. It's like, well, another issue is like, well, when you think about it, this feels like, you know, okay, imagine GTA Five if it didn't have all of its plot, you know, like all the back of the characters. It's just like, well, you, it's like, well, okay, the game would have you play as these guys, and it expects you to like them. That's what this movie feels like. GTA Five done without the charisma of the characters. It's like, when you think about it, this movie could be so much better if they gave more fleshing out to the characters. Like, give us a reason to root for them as they escape from the chase scene. But no, we're just apparently supposed to follow what they're doing. Basically, Joba, basically, Joba, this is supposed to be a, the movies. This is one of those movies where it's supposed to be a puzzle that you're trying to decipher before the movie eventually reveals a solution to you. And that can be done good. It, it really can be. And I guess I just will have to wait and see how I take that this movie does it. Although, I have to say, unlike a lot of movies where I did enjoy that sort of thing in the end, this isn't exactly giving me that many warm welcome signs. Oh, oh boy. It should be fun when we get to the... Oh, hi, YouTube. 
You see, Dwebs, we're watching videos on YouTube on a tablet. See, we're modern. Dwebs. Dwebs. Dwebs, <laughs> respond. Dwebs. Dwebs. Right Guys, I'm right here. Oh, okay. Oh, oh a final showdown. We're almost at the end, I think. You know, you know, because next time I pick a movie, uh, uh, I need to remind you to try to get some uh, something to keep you awake. Dwebs, uh, do you have some caffeinated tea you could drink, maybe? No, he, he hates ca coffee, so... No, I meant caffeinated tea. Well, at this point, the movie's nearly over, so there's no point. Think you can True. pull through? Full up all of water help. Eh, can't sure, harm. why not? Okay, I'll see if I can do that. Uh, so if I've got one. Like, uh, go, uh, take, like, 20 seconds and walk around a bit. Move your muscles a bit. Okay. Definitely get some water. That'll help out. All right. Ugh, Christ, this movie. <laughs> Don't worry, Dwebs. You'll be able to tear it apart in the final thoughts. Okay, be right back. Yeah, if I remember correctly, right now there's not really that much gonna be happening right now, so it's okay. Yeah, basically, he now he suspects Morgan Freeman is the is a fifth horseman. Even though they're supposed to be the four horsemen, but whatever. Nah, nah, nah. That would be way too good a plot point, and it would be sort of what I was hoping for, so it can't be that. <laughs> Damn, I'm Morgan Freeman. He, he actually son, made I'm, that line funny. Son, I'm Morgan Freeman. Do you really think you can somehow make me look bad? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I should be face bombing, but you're right. Morgan Freeman actually made me laugh at that. Again, Morgan Freeman is one of those rare actors that. Uh, oh, hold on. Oh, ha ha ha! Oh, the, the old, uh, oldest trick in the book. Oh, great! So now we're stooping to basically Batman in the '90s uh, criminal motifs. Oh, goody! The balloons. How did none of those pop? Uh, magic. They're magic balloons. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, um, you know, Morgan Freeman's awesome, but did he not just indirectly admit that he was misdirecting them and thus in cahoots? Again, I'm not saying anything. All right. All right. Trust me, Jova. Uh, the movie's got something real of a doozy planned for you. Okay, so now it's time for the final show of the Four Horsemen on top of this building. Yes, out of, what, three shows total. And yet they've somehow gotten that freaking name. Uh, publicity? Sure, why not? Ooh, particle effects. Oh, Conan! Oh, wait, no. Never mind. False alarm. For a moment, I almost thought they were going to bring back Conan. No, sorry. Conan's done. <sighs> Conan's, had enough of, Conan's had enough of this shit. It was fun while it lasted. So, so yeah, basically, they're shooting. They're, they're, they're basically, they're actually in that room shooting from that three-dimensional camera thingy. Whatever. So yeah, basically they're supposed to be kind of vigilante slash Robin Hood type things. Okay, I got that. Now I'm just wondering what the heck was up with whoever's telling them to do all this. But all shall be hopefully made clear. I hope. Hopefully those will be back soon because uh, we're about to get to the climax. Again, with the whole trusting. We haven't even fleshed out these characters to really care. Yeah. I mean, let's think about this. What do we know about the woman exactly? Uh, she's French. She's French, and she's Interpol, and she may or may not be hiding something, so for all we know, this could all just be a fake persona. 
Uh, even Mark Ruffalo, uh, we don't really know that much about. He's the cop, and that's it. And then he's quite possibly the one character we can at least with a clear head root for, because when it comes to the actual four leads in this movie, we don't know what the heck is going on with them. Okay, we get that they're vigilantes, but again, we've also established that they're being instructed by someone, so... Yeah, can't really credit them for all the cool stuff they've been doing lately. Alright then. Oh, are we fun? Hey! It's, it's a bit too late. Eisenberg to... actually isn't being a dick for once. It's a bit too late, though. Okay. All right, oh, you sound just a lot more time. happy. You're just in time, Dwebs. We're about to hit the comics. Okay, after much inner deliberation, I think I have come up with the twist. All right, what is it? Uh, uh, write it just, just in case, write it to me. Okay. Yeah, just because apparently this is something that really, I'm guessing this is one of those needs to be seen to be believed sort of twist. Uh, let's just say the twist is not pulled off well and leave it at that. Uh oh. <laughs> don't get me wrong. It was for, don't get me wrong. The movie did throw you foreshadowing for the big plot twist. The problem is that uh, when you look back and examine the the, the movie it, with that in mind, it doesn't. Things don't really add up. So it's like Heavy Rain's twist about who the origami killer was. Uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, pretty much. I guess. Yeah. What? And mannequins. Mannequins. Ah, shit! <laughs> Love that delivery. Ah, shit! <laughs> it's the little things in this movie that matter. Let's see if Dweb's got it. Uh, again, Dweb's, um, you, you're thinking too rational. Think too far. Uh-oh. Is the twist? So how soon is the twist coming uh, up? Uh, uh, we're, we're almost there anyway, so let's just watch. All right. <laughs> wouldn't, that be, uh, wouldn't that be? Wouldn't that be? would that be a big middle finger to the audience? <laughs> yes, yes, it would. It'd be like. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm responding. Uh, Dweb's just uh, tell me. Oh, let me guess. It was all an hallucination, but no, nothing of the sort. <laughs> oh, it's funny, Pedro. Oh, it's funny, Pedro, because like, well, just as you said, wouldn't that be a good thing to do to the audience? They, they literally said to start off the show, we're going to say goodbye. It's like that would have been a middle finger too. There you go. It's time for them to disappear because... Really? This is it for the show? Yes. What the fuck? Oh, staged. Oh. And now they've turned into money. <laughs> uh... <laughs> That's right, Twips. There you go. This is why Ma Jesse Eisenberg keeps getting hired because he has the ability to turn into money. <laughs> he, literally, he, he literally is. Um, uh, how, do I, how do we say it? I, I bet the I bet, I bet the people behind the American Ultra wish they could do that. I love how that detective guy with the glasses even got some money. Priorities. Money, money, money. Here comes the money. Money, money. <laughs> money, 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 money. Uh, you know, this is still a crime, though. You, you're, you're not supposed to be happy about this, though. And yet they look happy. Uh, Just... Guys, the criminals are getting away. Wait, this is it? Oh, right, the final show. Wait. Uh, <laughs> Do I have just called a twist? Oh, my God. Oh, and now they kiss. So wait, is that all we get of the FBI agent? Uh, Dwebs just called uh, the twist. <laughs> is it the twist involving that woman there? No, no, no. no. Uh, don't say anything, Dwebs. Uh, oh, we're, wow. we're, we're, we're almost there. We're almost there. Hold on. I'll keep silent. Don't worry. <laughs> Amazing. I'm, I, I, I assure you, ladies and gentlemen, Dwebs, just privately to me, uh, called the twist. Oh, look! Each of them have their faces on the bills. Because... So the money is fake. What? And now... Oh, wow. Wait. Wow, they pay... They, wow, did they overpay me again? 
No, no, I no. I think no. so. They framed Morgan Freeman. What? Why? Remember, remember Jova, um, Mark Ruffalo is convinced that uh, Morgan Freeman is working with them. Well, I get that, but why would they frame Morgan Freeman? You'll see. You'll see. Hold oh, on. <laughs> hey, look, it's the same camera spin that they used in that scene for Amazing Spider-Man 2. And Enchanted. And Smurfs. And, oh, so many of the movies that take place in New York Why is City. So many? What, what is it in every movie that takes place in Las Vegas always does this? What, New, York. Oh, New York City. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, well, take, well, then again, I guess this is one of the biggest tourist <gasps> spots Jova, of, of Jova, New York. Quick, yes. make... Jova, don't touch anything mental. Electro will, electro will electrocute you. And now Morgan Freeman is in prison. All right, jo- all right, Jova, pay attention, because this is the most important scene in the movie. This is where the big twist comes. Let's stay quiet. Nope, nope. Sorry, Ruffle. Let him hear him out. Let, Mor- he's Morgan Freeman, Mark. He's supposed to explain this convoluted plot. That's what he's good at. And actually make it sound clever. There you go. You know, a lot to bring up that the, the only uh, the, the, it's only by incredible luck and convenience that these tricks all worked. Yeah, I mean, you think that at this point an FBI agent would have caught on to the pattern on how they do. Wait. Yes, Dave Franco is still alive. Turns out it was indeed a magic trick. I just went. I, okay, keep in mind, Jova. I never, I never contradicted you. I just didn't bother to correct you. <laughs> of course. All right, so we're about to... There we go. Basically, the eye thing is in here. So, here's one thing I don't get. Didn't they clearly see Dave Franco's dead body in that burning car? Magic. Uh, Oh, wait. Maybe they're about to explain that. There you go. They're actually about to explain, yeah. We need to make this convoluted nonsensical plot plausible. Uh, Bring Morgan Freeman in here. Have him explain it. (laughs) <laughs> I love that mustache on Jesse Eisenberg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. There you go. Basically, they were there in the chase scene making sure things weren't well. And thank, there you go. Bas- thank goodness no innocent bystanders got hurt. Basically, the one that exploded there was a, a dummy. Oh, there. so you stole a cadaver from the morgue. Hey, Dwibs. Hmm? I, don't I think we found the next step up from King's Quest. Instead of stealing from the dead, we're now using the dead's body as part of our magic trick. <laughs> stealing, though, still. So, I mean, seriously. See, see, even, Mar- see, even Mark is fed up with how convoluted this has become. <laughs> You know, there gets to a point where even when Morgan Freeman... Oh. Yes, what Joey, you were going to say? You know, it gets to a point where, okay, it's neat how Morgan Freeman can actually explain this stuff, but these magic tricks get a bit too convoluted for their own good, to say the least. 
I mean, for one thing, how did they manage to plan exactly how the cars would go? There is no way to prove it, and it's New York Flipping City, the city that never sleeps. There is no way you can try and gauge the traffic there. Oh yeah, and uh, secondly, how the heck did they even manage to get the movers to do that? I mean, okay, technically, yes, you can do it. It's how a magic trick works, but you'd think somebody would have noticed, oh, I don't know, a crease in the mirror image. You know, that's sort of how reflection works. The eye, get it? Okay. <laughs> so now we're going to figure out who's been pulling the strings this whole time. Exactly. And now a merry-go-round. What? Okay, because... was it the Joker all along? Because I'm honestly starting to wonder. Oh, God. Trust me, believe it or not, Jova, the Joker would be a better... Uh, Twists. It would actually make sense at this rate. Alright, pay attention here, Joe, because this is important. Alright. Wait a minute. Wait. What? No. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Jove, Jove, let, let me explain. Hold on, Jove, hold on. So let me get this straight. The leader is the Interpol agent. Nope. Wait, it's not? That seems like exactly who they're... Oh, come on, Joe. We didn't get it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, you go. Oh, you. Oh, There you snap. go. <laughs> He's been the puppet master all this time. I called it. That's actually kind of cool now that I think about it. Sorry, Joe, but I've stolen your powers. Fair enough, it's, fair it, enough, it, fair it, enough. It's stupid, though, because, uh, okay, let's think about this for a moment, Jova. If he, this was all his plan, then how come he even tried to stop them? Because there's all, I guess all of this. On if you go back and watch his scenes where he's trying to catch them, it makes no sense that he's trying to, you know, I mean, I mean, a lot of things that he does over the course of the movie actually are not, are, are counterproductive to his plan. So, yeah, basically, the movie's giving us false, again, it's, it's the heavy rain thing. They're giving, they're intentionally giving us false information so that we cannot possibly guess the, the twists. Mm. Okay, 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 okay. I'm okay. I'm guessing there you that go. See those shots where you always saw some guy uh, with that thing on. That it was him. Basically, he was always there. I just, just I don't know. If, 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 <laughs> hey, 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 guys, guys, yeah. I got an idea. What? If you wanted to stay in the shadows, you know, just stay sick or something. Go in sick or something. Don't go try and stop your own plan. My guess is, like, well, he did it so that nobody would suspect him. I mean, hey, when you think about it, the person you'd least suspect is the leading officer on the case. There you go. Basically, he's the leader of the I organization thingy. So, is he even a real FBI agent? Uh, I don't even know. Ha, the movie guys, guys, get it? I, FBI. Yep. <laughs> There you go, they're in the eye, and I don't care. So, that's it? Movie okay, over? Okay, so yeah, you're probably wondering, Jova, why did the hell did Mark Ruffalo even go all to this trouble just to put Morgan Freeman behind bars? They'll explain it in the sequel or something. No, nah, actually, they'll explain it in the ending. What? Uh, mm. the, the very last end scene, basically. Basically, he's going to have one final talk with the Interpol agent where he explains oh God, everything. Oh, they're going to go tomorrow land on us? <laughs> But with Jova, I don't see Hugh Laurie here. So, this I is how it. the movie Laurie, ends? No, 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 no. The movie, there's going to be one more scene after this. 
So yeah, what exactly did we accomplish aside from putting Morgan Freeman behind bars? Poor Morgan Freeman. And now there's a lot of locks on the fence. Oh, oh, guys! Why uh, is that there? Hey, guys! What? You know that scene where the woman was trying to escape the water tank? Yeah. yeah. The actress playing her actually nearly drowned in real life. Oh, really? Yeah, she she got stuck and tried to alert the crew by banging on the window. But the cast and crew were so convinced, they didn't think anything of it because they thought that's what the character was supposed to be doing. Oops. <laughs> so, yeah, this booby nearly killed somebody. All right, so, yeah. Uh, he's going to explain uh, his motivation now. So, what, is he going to have her join him now? You know, officer, he's a criminal. You should arrest him. And I'm talking to the I'm, t- I'm talking to the woman. I'm, I'm uh, yeah. Does he have the evidence? Oh uh, yeah, I he's guess. confessing right now. I mean, that is hold on, quite... hold on, hold on. Let, let let him talk. Basically, his father was also a magician, and he got killed because uh, because of some of a screw up by Morgan Freeman. That's why he wanted to put him behind bars. I put this watch on my ass. Oh, sorry. Wrong movie. (laughs) So, uh, did this movie even have a protagonist or a bad guy? Not really. I mean, the... I mean, the good guy who we thought was the person we were supposed to root for turned out to be the leader, and yet apparently he was doing it to avenge his father, and, well... Hey, come to think of it, what about those four main leading horsemen? Uh, they're not important anymore, Joe, but it's, now it's the Mark Ruffalo show. Gee, it's not like they were our lead... So, I mean, seriously, the movie opened up with them and just... Hey, get oh, Mark Ruffalo is now apparently going to be the main character in the sequel. Oh, they disappeared... So, they're together now, I guess. So, partners in crime? Obstruction of justice? But don't you see, Jova? True love conquers all. Of course. Even though they have, uh, like, uh, no, uh, whatever. I'm the so movies. painfully confused with what I should even be. Wait, why did they throw the key away? Uh, so that they can never unlock the... Whatever, I don't even care. Oh, and there's keys all over the... I see a terrible movie. There you go, seed webs. This, there you go. So this, the entire movie is supposed to be a magic trick. They basically... The, the, fact, the fact that he's... Um, the fact that Mark Ruffalo is the, is the, is the puppet master, uh, it's supposed to be... You're supposed to go, whoa! I mean... Yeah. I mean, okay, okay, okay. On paper, it's a very cool twist but i mean now that i think about it okay okay okay. i get how i feel it's like oh it's like well the first time i saw that twist i thought well that's cool but then when i think about it it's like eh, it feels a little too awkward it's like it's like okay 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 i can get mark ruffle you know staging being the lead officer of the fbi going after them that actually is a neat idea but the way he goes about doing it is <sighs> Stupid. Yeah. So that was now you see me. Can I go first with my final thoughts? Go ahead. Yeah. As you could probably tell during the course of this commentary, there were times where I was bored. Yeah. But my God, that ending was so hilarious, especially considering <laughs> the fact that I stole Jova's powers and called it. <laughs> I'll say. Oh, hey, Michael <laughs> Kane and Morgan Freeman. You guys got Wait, com- used to common this maybe? Anyway, um, it, it, it's 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 a bad movie, but um, music's the, good, I guess. You know, the, the the twist was worth it. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, oh wait! Is, oh, uh, we've got a stinger. <clears throat> oh, the stinger was actually not in the theatrical version, if I remember correctly. So 
So now they're here. Ha! <laughs> What the fuck are they? A junkyard of some sort? A hideout. And now we're in the sewers? What? Looks <laughs> never mind that. Sounds like they're in the Power Rangers. Um... Oh, look, the eye. And uh, I guess that's the setup for a sequel? I guess. Yeah, but, but guys, don't okay, worry. Okay, I'm just going to look ahead and see if there's any other stingers coming up. Let's see. Hey, but, but, hey guys, don't worry. What? Uh, you know, the sequel should be better. After all, they're getting the director of such classics as G.I. Joe Retaliation and Gem and the Holograms. Oh, glorious. Please <sighs> let this actually be uh, an improvement because... This, okay, if they're planning to make a franchise out of this, there's no tiptoeing around it. They need to improve. Oh, here we go. The extended cut of the Now You See Me on Blu-ray added in an extra scene midway through the credits. It shows them early on in the film where the four horsemen are driving through the desert in a van. They get out of the car and walk through an abandoned and partly destroyed junkyard. They go into a room and find everything they need for their performances shown previously in the film. And Jesse Eisenberg character makes a remark about how he doesn't want there to be matching uniforms. All four of them notice the cards laid out on one box, and a picture of the eye can be seen in the background. So, apparently, it's us showing all the stuff that they used in their previous acts. Array? I guess. So that was my final thoughts. How about you two? I'll go. Oh, go boy. Ahead. This movie is... Stupid. I... Well, how should I put it like this? It's the artistic kind of stupid. Because I go, okay, okay, okay. When I first started this movie, I was really mad on it. I didn't really care much. And then, while I still found the movie overall stupid, I mean, it did get me to at least care for Mark Ruffalo in some cases. And like I said, the character interactions with characters like Morgan Freeman and Michael Caine are cool. By the way, Morgan Freeman's character is apparently supposed to come back in the sequel according to the cast listing, so... Will... I'm starting to wonder, will Mark Ruffalo's whole character thing of getting my Morgan Freeman behind bars be pointless? I don't know, Joe. I haven't, I, we haven't seen the sequel yet, so... We'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, okay, this movie, it's like, well... Eh, okay... <laughs> I'd say the worst thing about this movie is the fact that the four lead characters are the characters I care about the least. And it's not just a case of, you know, like, well, okay, personal preference. I mean, no, literally. The movie seems to go out of its way to focus on them the least in the grand scheme of things. I mean, what do you think about it? The main players are Mark Ruffalo, the Interpol agent, and uh, Morgan Freeman. Yeah, Morgan Freeman is more of a figure in the overall scheme of things. And yet, he's supposed to be one of the side characters. But yeah, I mean... But then, of course, came the twist that, of course, threw a wrench into everything. It's like... I think the way, I think the way to best sum it up is like, well, this is definitely a movie meant to try and, you know, make its money off of your first viewing... It's definitely one of those movies where you're like, well, the first time you see it, you think, wow, that was cool. And yet, when you think back to it or watch it a second time, the stupidest shows. Yeah, it's one of those movies where the like uh, the very moment that you allow your brain to even think about what's happening, the whole thing falls apart. Yeah. And even still, and even still, eh, and even when you aren't to that point, it, it's also a matter of how much you'll actually like the four main leads, the four horsemen, because I have to say, these are some of the most uncharismatic characters in media I have ever seen. And it's not just a matter of them being dicks, it's just a matter of them, except for maybe Woody Harrelson's character, and even still, the only reason his character stands out is because he's the character who seems to give the least crap about what's even going on. Oh, Doing uh, it with Joe. style, of course. Oh, Jova. Yeah. Um, you know you know Isla Fisher's character? Yeah. You know, you know her character's American, but Isla Fisher is actually Scottish and was raised in Australia. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we got another fake American on our hands. Interesting. 
hey, I wonder if we have another fake American in the, in the sequel because guess what? Daniel Radcliffe will be joining the Now You See Me franchise, apparently. Yeah. Daniel hey, wait, 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 wait. I just really? realized something, guys. Daniel Radcliffe in a movie about magic. Ah, uh, glorious. How much you yeah. want to bet they're going to make a Harry Potter joke? All right. <laughs> To close out my thoughts, the music was awesome, though. It's, 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 uh, it's Brian Tyler. Of course, it's going to be awesome. So overall, I'd right. summarize this movie as definitely the one-hit wonder case of a movie. It's like um, it's good for your first viewing, but you don't be surprised if you find yourself less and less endeared to this movie with multiple views. Yeah. Okay, Okay. all right. Yeah, pretty much like this is one of those movies that uh, it tries way, way too hard to be clever uh, with its convolutedness and the twists and all that shit. Uh, I think this is a movie that uh, could have really used some trimming down. uh, Okay, fine. Log off. Okay, back down on the, 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 the twists, guys. Yes, your movie will be less. Uh, uh, less flashy, but at least uh, you will uh, get some time to actually develop the characters. Uh, you know, it's a movie that's trying way too hard to get people to go, "Wow, this movie's awesome and clever and shit." Yeah, and 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 it tr- and this, and because of that, it just falls completely flat on its face. It fails at completely making us care for the characters. And and it and it tries way too hard to be clever, but without the good writing to back that up. Yeah, you know, I'm left wondering what became of Michael Caine's character. I mean, his character really he, didn't have that much of an arc. Now that I think about he it, vanished. It doesn't. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anymore, Joe. But the writers dump them. Oh, apparently they're bringing him back for the sequel, according to the cast listing. Unless they haven't placed someone completely different. All right, all right. So that was Now You See Me. And now you don't. You don't. <laughs> well, we're not. All right, everybody. I guess eventually we will probably do Now You See Me too when it's available. See you, everybody. See ya. See ya.